In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips that could elevate your drawing right away. So stick around to the end. Hi, my name is Henry Gao and I am trained as an architect. Do you ever wonder why your drawing just doesn't look as good as compared to say Francis Ching? Hopefully you know who that is. Well, without seeing your work, I can only guess a number of reasons and sorry to break it to you, but I think the most obvious one is you're probably not drawing enough. So the good news is I think these 10 things that you will learn right away could really elevate your architectural and interior drawings. Tip number one is line intersection. When you have two lines crossing each other at a corner or when they hit each other at an end, it's okay for them to intersect a little bit like this. You don't need to be worried about the precise intersection of one line to another. By doing this, you actually make your line look a little bit more confident. And you'll see this in a lot of experienced sketchers. So try it out yourself. I'm just gonna draw a cube. And this actually makes you draw a little bit faster when you're less worried about having the lines meet exactly at the corner. Tip number two is wiggle your lines. What I mean by this is when you're drawing a straight line, you can have it drawn very straight and you can also have a little bit of quiver and shakiness in it. It's almost like your hand has a slight trimmer and you'll see this in a lot of older architects drawing where they have this natural quiver and for me, it's actually manufactured. So when, you, when I draw a straight line, it doesn't feel as sketchy, but when you have a slight quiver in your line weight, I, I think it gives it a little bit more character. So try to practice wiggling your um, hand or shaking your hand a little bit to achieve this kind of a wiggle look. Um, and you can do this if you have a iPad with a grid of lines and you can just follow the grid to keep your lines as straight as possible but with a little bit of shakiness in it. If you're drawing on paper, you can also have a gridded paper on top or if you're using a gridded paper, you can do the same thing by practicing just following the grid and follow that quiverness, if that's a word. Tip number three is try to maintain a single line as much as you can and not have a series of short lines when you draw. When you draw a series of short lines, it doesn't make your drawing look very confident. But when you have a single line on the space, it kind of uh, feels like you know what you're doing. But it's okay if you can't maintain an exact long straight line. If you wanna break it apart somewhere in the middle, like a lot of my drawings, I would do this and continue my drawing. But it doesn't look very good when it's a series of shorter dashes. Tip number four is having some textures in your drawing and they can be representative of the different materials and really add another dimension to your drawing. So I'm gonna show you six ways of some common textures that I usually use in my drawing. Number one is how to represent shadow. So if something is in shade, I typically like to shade it with straight lines and break it apart with a little dot in the middle. I'm not sure why I do this, but I just think it looks good if it's a little bit of hatched and it has those textures in the shadow. I'll show you an example of what I mean later. But this is personally what I do. When drawing wood, depending on if you have different cuts of wood or not, but I think it's easy to represent your wood similarly, but with a little bit of, you know, wave in it. With glass, typically I use diagonal lines to represent the glass. So this would be in the window area. With the grass, it's a little different. I think grass can be represented a variety of ways, but I like to use a series of sprinkles in the grass. And this, this is similar to how you would draw stucco or concrete sometimes, whereas I would actually not use uh, these sprinkles, but I would dot it in just to give it a little bit of texture. So these two are very similar, but they can be used kind of interchangeably depending on what you're drawing. And metal is more or less represented just like that. 
It kind of reminds me of a hatch from AutoCAD. So now you have six ways to represent, I think most of the textures you might need in your drawing and they're very effective. Tip number five is more about how you hold your pencil than the way you draw, but I think it has effect on the way you draw because where you hold your pencil will give you more control or less control over the drawing. Personally, I like to hold my pencil actually about two inches away from the tip of the pencil. I feel like this is where I have the most control. If you hold it too closely, you might inter it might interfere with you touching the screen. If you hold it too high on the pencil, you're gonna lose some of that dexterity when you draw. And I find holding it two inches from the top is the perfect place. Tip number six is picking out the right pen or the line weight to start your drawing off. So before I even begin my drawing, I would test out one of my three line weights I have on Procreate. So I have thin, medium, and thick. I just wanna try it out to see which one will work better for the drawing. So for example, this thin line weight, I think it's gonna be too thin for the drawing. So, and then subsequently, I would try it out the medium line weight and see if that's a better fit or the thick line weight to see if that's going to work better. Typically, the thinner the lines you have, the more details you will require and therefore the more time you need for the drawing. Having a thick line weight would require you to draw less info and maybe that's the intent of the drawing is you don't really need that much detail. So I want you to think about what is the drawing intended for and this will inform you on which line weight you want to be selecting. So I think for this drawing, I ended up with a medium line weight because I think that would look best for the amount of information I needed to convey without drawing too much detail. Tip number seven is visual hierarchy. And I think you probably have heard of this in architecture school. It's really about representing your drawing with different line weights. When I was back in school, I had to use pencil for the first three years and I had to learn the different weight of pencil to represent different parts of the drawing. So in here, for example, the part of the wall that's being cut, that's, that has a thicker line, you can see it's represented by a thicker pen weight. And the, the medium line weight I typically use is for representing furniture or casework or anything that's not part of the texture. And then the texture layer is really about representing, you know, wood, tile, and that has the thinnest line weight of them all. And I like to have the three different pens uh, broken down by their own brushes. I find it's easy to not be able to adjust the slider and just select the pens for a thick, medium, and thin. Tip number eight is about how light and shadow can help you define your architecture. So you can see the shadow areas are parts of the windows and areas that are shaded by the sun. And this can really give you definition to bring out the different aspect of the design. And I talked about how you could use these series of diagonal with dotted lines in between to represent shadow. Tip number nine is about drawing layers as much as you can. So in this drawing, you can see my pen weight is actually composed of five different layers and each of them have their own purpose. So this first layer was about creating, defining the general architecture. The second and third layer is about adding details, which I might want to remove or change in the future. So if I do need to remove a part of it, I don't need to remove or edit my base layer. And the fourth and fifth layer is really about adding textures that I could easily remove or add on. Um, I think the downside of drawing this, in, of doing this in physical paper is the physical paper, there's a likely that your drawing will move or the paper will move. And also when you overlay a drawing on top of another, you lose some of the opacity, the layer below. So it's harder to see your drawing. And sometimes that could be a good thing. Other times that's kind of a hindrance because you have to always align things, scanning Photoshop and recompose the drawing in Photoshop afterwards. So that's just kind of a little bit more work. Personally, I find this uh, way of working really effective because it's just very quick. Tip number 10 is about don't move your elbow or your wrist when you draw. Move your entire arm when you draw a straight line. And personally, I like to rotate my paper because I find there is a certain angle that allows me to be more comfortable 
when drawing. As an architect, your job isn't to be amazing at drawing. You just need to be good enough to communicate your ideas through paper. And if it ends up looking super pretty, I think that's gonna go a long way in your career. Well, I believe time plays a huge factor in becoming really good at drawing, but I also think you can achieve high proficiency in a much shorter period of time if you're good about practicing these tips and be diligent in the next couple months. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. There will be plenty more videos in the future that teaches you about drawing and the techniques associated with it.